Hey, I'm David Levin, and welcome to Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes and untold TV stories you probably wouldn't have known from the stars and creators who lived them. Today, the final part of my archival interview with the late, great Alice Ghostly, arguably one of the great character actresses of the first half-century of TV comedy. Today, Alice talks about the importance of listening and acting, what it was like working with the legendary comedians Jackie Gleason, Burt Lahr, and Jonathan Winters. Alice gives me her theory of improvisation, and she talks about being on Diagnosis Murder and her disappointment that she didn't get to work with Dick Van Dyke. Here's the sweet and hilarious Alice Ghostly. You know, you've always had really great comedic timing. You're, you know, you're sort of known for for your little, for the takes that you do and and, and sort of trademarks that that you're known for. Yeah. It's just fantastic. I mean, it's just like watching you work... How, when when you were doing these these shows, I mean, you were you were cast basically to play Alice Ghost. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. How did how? I mean, you know, if I had a question, I would just ask it. Yeah. I'm sort of, I'm not sure where I'm leading with this, but when you would go on and do these shows, I mean, did people say, okay, now we don't want you to do this, or was it, you know, you were playing your your persona? I just did my own thing. And it always seemed to work, uh, particularly in. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know how how I do it, except there is one important thing: is to listen to what you're being asked, your cue, in other words, and and for a brief, shining moment, think about what they've said, and then when you answer, sometimes. It doesn't always work, but sometimes it does, and it comes out very funny, you know. What um, when you were doing when you were doing some of these roles, and you're going in there, and you're doing, you know, get smart, or bewitched, or you know, and you're going in, and you're playing, you know, basically your your persona in those in those parts. How do the other actors respond to that? I mean, is there is there oh, Is there anybody that you've played with that you've really got, oh, that really went really well? Really well. Uh, Jackie Gleason. (laughs) He was the best guy I ever worked with, I think. What was that like? Well, we would sit on the stoop of a house and just talk to each other. We'd been engaged for 18 years. And he worked on the subway. And he'd bring me gifts he found on the subway. And one of them was a wig. (laughs) And I had to redo my hair to make it look like a wig. And one of them was a crocodile with a clock in its stomach. (laughs) And, And then sometimes we'd dance. And it was just kind of discussing the days. It was called Agnes and Arthur. And we never did rehearse. We just go through the lines in his dressing room. And one night we started, and uh, I forgot the line, my line. I just went totally blank, and I couldn't pull myself together. So people knew it was a mistake, you know. And he just went right on with the next line, and we kept going. And then all of a sudden, he said, hey, we've got to stop this now. He said, there's a noise in one of those lights up there, so we'll fix that, and then we'll just do it over again, start over. Instead of saying, the broad made a mistake, so we have to start over, he was that he was that much of a gentleman. Wow, gracious. He, was, he really was great. He was so sweet. Wow. And the most and the most difficult star I ever worked with was Bert Lahr. How so? What was he like? He was a hypochondriac. And um, one night <clears throat> it was snowing, it was bad in New York, and we rented a car. And Felice picked me up at the theater, and he said, is there anyone else in there we can take home? And I said, I think Bert's still there. So I went upstairs, and Bert was still there, and he had a thermometer in his mouth. 
And I said, Bert, are you all right? And he said, I've got a temperature. I said, what is it? He said, 98.6. And I said, that's perfect. You don't have one. I said, do you have, do you have any way home? Do you have a car? And he said, no. And I said, would you like us to take you home? He said, yes. Well, he lived on Fifth Avenue in this wonderful building. And he appreciated it. The next night, he sent his dresser over to my room and said, Mr. Lahr says that if you would take him home every night, he'd go half on the gas. <laughs> <laughs> so we said, we'll take him home as long as we have the car, but we've only rented it for a week, so... Oh, that's funny. He was funny oh, that funny. way. And, but he was not easy to work with on stage. He was on stage, and that was it. He didn't, he didn't give you anything. And if you, did, uh, if you did anything he didn't like, he would do a funny little dance in front of you or something. He was not, not a nice actor. Not a generous uh, partner. No, not at all. Mm-mm. How about Jonathan Winters? Well, he's a little difficult to work with, although I like him and he makes me laugh. He's so funny. But you never know what he's going to come up with. He doesn't come up with the cue, you know. He's just off on his own, being funnier than what's written for him, I'll admit that. But it's kind of hard to go along with it. It's very hard to top him. Do you have an improvisational background? Do I? Yeah. No. No, so it's better to have the lines there. Oh yeah, you know. yeah. I've done the. I did an improvisation. Improvise. Improvisation. Improvisation. I did a show that was all improv. Improvisation. Once. What was that? Do you remember? It was just called uh, improvisations, I think, and it didn't last. I think two two times maybe, or maybe we never got it on. But I know we practiced a lot, and. Uh, I kind of caught on to the way you can start those, you know. If you establish where you are or what you're doing or something, then it kind of rolls along. Otherwise, you just stand and look at each other. <laughs> I understand. Somebody said to me the uh, the art of improvisation is yes and. You know, go with whatever the other yeah. says. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. It's the next thing that you have. <laughs> and just enjoy, you know, like just whatever premise they set up, you know, you just yeah, I'd say I was there once too. Yes, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If uh, you were a diagnosis murder, ne- yes, once. Yeah, well, who did do you remember who you played? I played a secretary, but I never worked with Dick Van Dyke. Although I would have loved to. I'm very fond of him, and I've never met him, but he seems so nice. Yeah. Uh, I might have met him when he was younger, when he was in Bye Bye Birdie, when I went back to see Paul, but I don't uh, I don't remember that. Do you have a favorite of somebody that you've worked with that, uh, that you really enjoyed working with them? Uh, Is there a person that you've worked with that you that you really Jackie Gleason Jackie was the one, nice. yeah. And I've enjoyed working with many people. Really, uh, I enjoyed working with Paul and Ronnie Graham. And uh, on television, I enjoyed working with. Uh, Well, I tell you, I enjoyed working with most of the people I worked with, to tell you the truth. Some nice people out there. Really nice, yes. And everybody is always helpful. They know if you come in new, you know, and you're in for one episode or something, they really go out of their way to make you feel comfortable, which is nice. Very nice. Very nice. Well, you've, you've had such a great career. And, you know, I mean, just when I mentioned your name to the various people that uh, 
I told them I'd be interviewing you. There's just, I've just got, oh my gosh, that's so wonderful. It's so You're great. kidding. No, I'm not kidding. I interviewed Bud Yorkin yesterday, and he was like, wow, that's wonderful. Oh, how nice. And uh, and Mr. Sicking, when he came in, he's like, Alice Mosley, he lives the face lit up. He goes, oh my God, I've got to say hello. So, how very nice. Know that. And, I uh, appreciate that. I really and, do. As I said, I got so excited when I found out that I was going to be interviewing you. Oh, well, um, that's nice. And so, thank you for coming. Is there anything we've missed? Oh, anything? I don't probably, but I don't remember. You don't remember on the way home. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't I say that? That's Why true. didn't I? That's, yeah. That's right. But I've enjoyed myself enormously. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming in today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Okay. Really. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, I'm Ralph. Until next time, please leave me your comments. Let me know what you think of the show. I read every comment. If you can't watch the video version, you can listen to our podcast. And if you're listening to our podcast, you can watch us on YouTube at Pop Goes to Culture TV. Please subscribe. Please follow Pop Goes to Culture on Twitter at Pop Go Culture. Facebook or email me at Pop Goes to Culture TV at gmail.com. And please subscribe to our Patreon campaign. Just a puck or a buck, a buck, a dollar or two from you can help me keep doing these shows. And for three bucks, you get a chance to be on our live sister show. Ask them yourself. Thanks for watching. We will be here again very soon.